before you came to earth in this human adventure, you got to see previews of potential future versions of earth. Mm. You got like little um, film snippets of this is what's possible. This is what's possible. This is in the range of probability. If you choose to live roughly like this, you know, or roughly like that. So you're given outlines or blueprint options. One of those options contains a multidimensional interaction ongoing. So you know it before you incarnate. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, you're excited as a soul. You're excited about pursuing a very active <laughs> multidimensional weaving of the web, for lack of a better yeah. term. Exploration, sure. Yeah. yeah, which involves also the access to your physical DNA. So you're... you're mind body and soul you're all in and you can choose yeah. yeah you can choose whether you want to go that deep or whether you want to be more on a surface level they are part of the program or whether you don't want to be part of the program at all or whether you just rather um yeah i don't know have the ability we all have abilities we all have some multi-dimensional spectrum that we expertise in is my strong right. conviction for every human being no exception you don't have to be special for that we all are special in that right. way some people just remember or activated it or and some are in the process of doing that so waking up to that but exactly. we all got it and we all need each other because we all carry a part of the puzzle Welcome to Far Out with Faust. I'm Faust Ticho, and today I'm joined by my friend, Wieteke Kuhlhoff. Let me tell you about this incredible Dutch woman and what she's been up to. She's a visual artist and an illustrator. She's a life coach. She's a metaphysical teacher, and she's a trans channel. And the more I read and learn about her, the more I'm in awe of everything that she is doing. Uh, so I would like to, if I may, as kind of becoming my, my custom to read you a bit of the message before I introduce you officially to the messenger. So I wanted to read this to you because I think it's so relevant to what's happening in our society. Um, Arjun was asked about lying and integrity and specifically about little white, little white lies, as we like to call them. And I, and I, the answer that came through, um, came through Witika is I think, very, very interesting. I'm going to read it to you. Sure, we understand that the little white lie in your culture at least can be considered as a way of showing your respect or affection for another person. Yet simultaneously, you have chosen to be in hiding from that same person because you do not trust what would happen if you tell them your truth. How then is that an expression of your respect and affection? We find this intriguing as we can see how close at least a segment of your population has evolved to actually being able to consciously see right through such smoke and mirrors. You see, if the person is in tune with their inner knowing, they would most likely pick up on the fact that they're being lied to, as no deliberately fabricated lie can have a harmonious vibration, and disharmony is what stands out. Nature is a rich and multi-layered orchestra in balance. It is the music flowing harmoniously. A lie is like a sour note. It's what yells, look at me. It's what makes you wave your own inner red flag because subconsciously you wish this aspect to align with the rest of the orchestra. You have a desire to look at it, to acknowledge and to transform it, to go with the flow and to fit in. And then you would be able to enjoy the deepened abundance of its music. It just depends on how ready a person is to allow themselves to hear such intuitive nudges, but you all naturally crave balance, harmony, and flow. We took a thanks for beaming back in with me. <laughs> Thank you, Faust, for your um, ongoing love and enthusiasm for this wonderful work and for the platform and stage that you're providing for people. 
Um, and I'm so grateful to to dive into this and and I love how you just you know pick snippets from <laughs> from this work. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that you picked this one, which I, I didn't know what you were going to say just now. And, uh, <laughs> I, I love that you picked this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, you know, I went through a bunch of stuff and I was, I just thought this answer was so, uh, with everything that's going on and all the narratives being spun and, you know, with, if it's not one thing, it's the next between, you know, what happened in 2020 and now with this ongoing conflict and war happening, it's just like, there's so many narratives that, and, and, you know, society has decided that, um, well, I shouldn't say society, but um, the powers that be have decided that, um, you know, in order to secure their interests, these little white lies are quite acceptable. And, mm. you know, the, they've become the norm for the rest of us. And, uh, and it really takes that inner alignment to be able to sift through it all and, and come to, an assessment of truth. Um, you know, you're certainly not going to get it from either side. They're going to give you their point of view. <laughs> so I just thought it was very relevant. And I love the answer that Ar Arjun went through and gave to mm -hmm. you. Yeah. 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 And it's wonderful to hear it again. It sounds crazy <laughs> if you're the channel, yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, I too need these reminders and we're all just human and we're all on this journey of in a sense, yeah. deprogramming is a better word than reprogramming, actually, <laughs> to yeah. become more of our true natural selves and um, stop hiding beneath all, you know, the layers uh, for sure. So, Indeed. and you're right with, with these times politically and all it's, yeah. I, I am not worried or concerned though. I really am an optimist and I mm -hmm. really do believe that um, everything that we observe right now that we can use it in a way so that we can grow from it and learn from it and become um, yeah, a yeah. world that we we may currently not even believe is possible. I really believe <laughs> we yeah, we have tremendous uh, yeah. potential. We are walking around with that, you know, so that's Absolutely. I get I get really excited for that. <laughs> we have a lot we have a lot we're working out and we're we're literally, you know, in the process of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I, I that's how I try to think of it and um I, I you know I have I have many days when I'm like, you know what? It's it, it has to work out mm -hmm. one way or the other. And the good news is, you know, we have as many chances at it as we're going to need. You know, well, maybe not we personally in these personalities but we as a as a species and 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 as souls you know we will it will work out one way or the other you know yeah yeah so i'm i yeah. try not to worry about it yeah 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 i agree it's i mean i mean if all timelines exist right <laughs> yeah uh there must be a whole bunch of them that are amazing <laughs> that's right as a result of what's happening right now, so and Arjuna said before that you couldn't um, come up with an idea unless it, it had some level of validity or reality to it, be it on another dimension, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But you, if you can pick it up, in other words, if you can imagine even just the tip of the iceberg of, of a type of world that worked out, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. That means you're harmonizing with it in that moment, or you couldn't pick it up. It's like two tuning forks right next to another. Yeah. And if you hit the one, the other one starts um, vibrating in harmony with the one that is already sending out the message. So when you pick up on that, you pick up on um, a glimpse, a glitter, you know, like glimmer yeah. of this version of Earth that must exist. Um, and there are yeah. so many previews, like little tiny previews of it are here now <laughs> yeah. i really i do do um remind myself to look at the good news as well you know to right. like really um yeah, you have find to. yeah you have to go searching <laughs> True. For these days. also yes <laughs> that's funny you're the second the, the, this is the second podcast in a row i've had someone bring up that analogy of the tuning forks ah, um, all right and it's and it's such a, a wonderful analogy you know if you i don't know how many people are listening to uh this podcast who who 
aren't aware of frequency and vibration and, and just how kind of contagious those things can be for lack of a better word. But, mm. uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's incredible to me when all when synchronicities start to happen from one podcast to the next. Um, but, you know, let's, let's, I, I would I would love, I want, I want everyone to know who we're referring to when we get to our, our June, but um, mm -hmm. am I saying is, am I saying that right? Or is it yeah. our June? Okay. That's good. But yeah. before we get in, <laughs> to him let's let's give everyone a little um a, a little greater black background uh for you because mm -hmm. you it's it's such an extraordinary uh kind of upbringing with with all these different layers to it and and i know that that's it's a it's a longer story but let's let's go through and and i would love to highlight the way your childhood kind of stands out even with all the wonderful channels who I've had on my, on, on my podcast and who I know, you know, your childhood is definitely, I think, um, extraordinary. So, so take us through that a little bit. All right. Okay. So um, I believe everything is energy. I want to say that first. And I don't believe that if somebody has a challenging childhood, childhood in whatever way, shape or form, that that is a punishment or karmic, you know, in that way, I can see how sometimes challenges are there to prepare us for something really great. Like I, I believe that people who dive into a life that is full of a pair or, or seeming blockages and stuff, challenges, mm -hmm. I believe these are really brave souls, you know? So I want to say that first. <laughs> um, I felt quite alone and lost for a long time with my experiences. I wasn't raised to believe um, in ETs at all. Uh, everything that had to do with ETs was science fiction movies <laughs> on the television back in Literally, the days. Yeah. And they used to be quite aggressive. So it was always fighting. And this was definitely the era where the Martians came to eat our brains, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and yeah. that's it. Invasion so, of the body snatchers. Right. Yeah. So my only association with that was um, negative in the sense that it, it had so much violence around it. Um, on the other hand, and we've spoken about this before, so I'll see if I can make it shorter. Uh, I was experiencing visitations of what I now understand were first a grace and later hybrid uh, extraterrestrials or multi-dimensionals um, or extra-dimensionals is probably the best word. Right. Um, and other um, star brothers and sisters, let's just call it that. And so how, old, how old were you when, when those... It started really early. My first memories are, I'm like two and a half, three years old. Wow. Um, and I'm very visual and tactile in my memories and also in receiving of information. So um, uh, the very first conscious memory of seeing them enter my room, I was standing up straight, eyes wide open, clearly awake, and I was holding the I keep forgetting the, the word. The, yeah, I don't know what to call them. They're little bars. <laughs> the bars the, yeah, in, a, on... in a baby's crib. Right. So I, I needed those to stand up. So I was definitely small. Yeah. Um, and um, big in my perspective as a child, big mm -hmm. beings came through the wall right across of the bed. I looked straight at them. And my very, very naive childlike association was was uh, with that was machine-like beings. Mm. Uh, I didn't know how else to translate it in my, um, at that moment, right. Right. children's dictionary. Right. So I, I literally thought of uh, drills, machines, they had technology. That's how I translated technology. Mm -hmm. uh, they realized I could see them and I remember they didn't expect me to do that or to mm. be able to recognize them. And I knew there was a moment of... Um, they were having a little meeting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, this wasn't supposed to happen. Didn't expect she would be able to see us. So there wow. was a bit of, you know, they didn't, they weren't prepared for that. Uh, so something changed um, and the scene left. I also asked them to go. I kind of, I basically said, go away, go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because I was super afraid. Sure. Um, and they left, but I was really terrified from then on. And I was always like uh, looking before I went to bed uh, or to mm -hmm. sleep. I was like checking the walls and corners and anything, you know, that looked like it or 
resembled the energy of it. Right. Um, and those those interactions, they they continued through. To, I know they changed for you, yeah. and and yeah. and that you started to you started to see them uh, differently as you yes. grew Since, through. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're, now you're so right. Um, so they made a little note. She can see us. Let's come in a disguise next time we show up. So mm -hmm. they came as animals. I loved animals. So they would show up as animals. Thinking, yeah. But they were a little odd. So it's animals, you know, like a bunny or right. a tiny cat or kitten or a puppy dog, like small, but, you know, cute, yeah. but and big eyes. Uh, but there was something off. There was always something off. Anyway, the eyes were too big. Um, the, there was like a weird tail or not a fitting right. tail, or there was something off in the shape that would tell the difference of an official bunny, so to speak, or a regular one. Um, so now there were animals in my bedroom that I could see with my eyes open. Right. And then something happened. I just, I understand right now that that was like a transition phase. Um, I saw them, we locked eyes. And I don't want to say I lost consciousness, but I shifted dimensions. And sometimes I forgot everything that came after that. Mm. And it just blanked. And sometimes I came back with memories and I found myself back in my bed and then the animal was gone. What uh, was the so, picture of your, of your memories of these interactions when you had? Very different uh, from like a doctor's visit to mm -hmm. going to a type of school to having, I mean, with other children, like right. really a class, <laughs> uh, to having experiences about energy, like classes about energy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you could call them universal truths or something, but there was education going on in many ways. So there, right. when I got a little older, I remember there were moments where I suddenly was in a scene Um where I somehow intuitively understood I could make, uh, so there was a path in front of me. This was an extraordinarily nice experience. Mm -hmm. A path with pebbles. How do you say little, the little ground? Yeah, we rocks. would say pebbles, sure. And um, there were trees next to that path and it was like in a forest, but I also understood this is a setup. It's like a hologram perhaps, right. I don't know. And I understood I was teaching or learning. I mean, I'm sorry, I was learning um how to um lift things maybe you call it telekinesis telekinesis or psychokinesis yeah. yeah yes um and uh, there was music and the trees were producing music uh, oh. so all the vibrations had sounds and i could swing my arms a little bit like you would with an orchestra i mm -hmm. guess uh and then the pebbles would lift off the path and start waving like dancing and it was wow. just so beautiful and it brought me back with a really self-empowered feeling, mm -hmm. realizing that everything is vibrational. Um, and I already, as a teenager, saw the auras with colors around people. Okay. Uh, but there was a really restless time around my 17th year, and I kind of turned it off. I just yeah. said, okay, I can't handle this right now. Uh, extra information. It later came back, but for a really long time, that wasn't there because right. I didn't want to. Just it was too much information. Well, yeah, you were, my God, you were in the prime of your teenage years for good or for better or for worse. That's that's mm -hmm. a lot to deal with by <laughs> itself, let alone yeah, the, all that. <laughs> the visitations on its own, right? So, right. and then during the day that I was like, okay, so uh, during the day, I just want to be here <laughs> on yeah. earth. And yeah, so I didn't feel like I had someone to talk to. Uh, I did try it. I did some attempts, but they worked out in a way where my final conclusion was already very young as a child. I better not speak about this because it upsets other people. Yeah. So that was a lesson I took from that experience. And then um, that's kind of what I told myself to just keep it to myself. And I didn't really open up about it until at least... Well, when did you 20s. start drawing? How old were you when you started to? I mean, I, I, all kids. I drew a lot. All you, the time. You drew, and you drew a yeah. lot all the time. <laughs> I drew a lot. And I wanted to do art school as soon as I knew such a thing existed. I was like, oh, that's where I'm going. That that's sounds where like I have me. to yeah. go there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I saw some, some incredible drawings that, if I'm not mistaken, you saved from your childhood that were representative of some of these interactions. Was, was I, re, was I, 
seeing those right. I mean, I, I'm not talking about the children's book that you later went on mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to illustrate and draw, but but were some of some of those drawings that you had were they they was, were from your childhood and there and are some. Your, yeah, yeah, some first attempts to <laughs> express it in a drawing are they're fascinating. I'm gonna, are, I'm gonna, I can't ah, wait yeah. to show uh, my listeners or my my listeners, but you know, everyone who's watching the the video portion on YouTube, it's these drawings. I mean, they really speak volumes as to you were to absolutely. I mean, people can say what they want. You were definitely going through something because it was coming out in your, you know, in your artwork even as a child. So it's pretty and, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was just um, with the limited perspective that you have an attempt to somehow um, process it into something outside of me. So drawing was one way and writing was another. So I kept a diary for a really long time. Mm -hmm. I'm still keeping, when I find the discipline, (laughs) a dream diary. Um, But writing was my next, you know, way of uh, processing a lot of this information. And so when I started Art Academy, eventually, I decided to um, pick the, I guess, the direction within there, within the study of illustrational arts, because you could combine text and images. Illustration, obviously, is with a text. Mm -hmm. So I... During those years, I was writing my own poetry and short stories and accompanied with illustrations and also, you know, the assignments you get from the school. But I loved that I I didn't have to pick either the word or the image because I always called myself a translator. So when Mm -hmm. somebody would ask me, what is an illustrator really? And I would say it's a visual translator of the text. And ideally, you don't just draw what the text says, but you draw what's hiding between the words. Right. A good illustrator captures, you know, the underlying me- course, message or yeah. something. So Same with I, a good filmmaker, yeah. Right, exactly. So I was um, really very enthusiastic about that. It, it felt like handling magic in a way mm-hmm. to, to be able to work with creativity in that way. And then to my own surprise (laughs) eventually uh i turned out channeling (laughs) and and i'm just doing the same thing but the other way around i just realized uh a year into doing that i was like i'm doing the same exact thing it's the same what's between the words but now i'm translating the images into language it's the same game but the other way around so it's still the same passion that never changed so I feel like this feels so at home for me to do this and it's such a joy to my heart to be able to continue to play. I just never knew that these these guys would be a part of that game at some point. <laughs> that's that's incredible. That's awesome. Uh, you know, when you say explain a little bit how you how you translate like how the the parallel between what you're doing um with your art and what what you do as a channel so we we should definitely tell people so they have a you know more of a linear idea so you did you what came first because i know that vocal channeling didn't come till much later for you first yeah. i know that you had uh, you you had a an event which is which is crazy because i'm sure you i know you saw a, a triangle ufo and mm-hmm. you were with a friend you just, yeah. uh, when you were i think in your early 20s and yeah. and that's that, that's crazy cuz that i think that's how that's just about how old daryl was and he saw he saw a, a triangle when he was with his two friends Mm -hmm. um and uh but and that was but that was years before you really found channeling channeled work and and got into all this Mm -hmm. i didn't know anything about it so like i said um i wasn't raised with the idea of ets and i knew some one or some yeah several beings (laughs) were were visiting me And I knew that all along because their presence is not something you can ignore or deny. At least I knew I couldn't. Um, The whole room would be filled with, you know, a static when they were there. It's like it's really strong energy field. And I was very aware of that. So that continued. And from the grace, gradually it transformed into hybrids. 
And they're much more like us, much more gentle. And as a visual transition, the animals that often showed up as a little bit darker animals or, you know, like dark brown or blackish, uh, tr tr transformed into white animals. And I really see this as a new chapter in my visitation um, history. So then white animals would show up with big blue eyes, for instance, or green uh, and different colorations. And then eventually at some point, a white cat jumped into the room. I was having an out of body experiences experience with it. So I knew my body is over there sleeping, but I'm standing in the same room. And I saw mm. the white cat jump through the window, which was actually closed, but it was possible in the right. out of body experience because then it was open. Um, and the cat jumped onto the ground, looked straight at me. And I was breathing in with surprise, like, oh, wow, mm. I, I can't believe how clearly I see you. I was, um, can you say, blown away with this? Totally. Encounter. You could say blown away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think I was almost 18. So late 17, maybe just 18. Um, and then he transformed right in front of me into a humanoid, uh, rather small uh, ET. E so this was a Sasani being. I understand that now. So one of the first hybrids I ever saw full body <laughs> yeah. was was a sasani and they he didn't have hair he was male he spoke to me telepathically so in my mind um but and let you know that 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 i mean i think they showed you that from the time you were little that the, the these the the animals that you used to see exactly right that, I mean, was, that was the message it's been, <laughs> he literally sent me look it's yeah. been us all along and i immediately understood that um and then a bit of a what you might think is a creepy thing happened <laughs> if you're new to this as a viewer mm -hmm. he uh he suddenly like a magician pulled up a card like mm -hmm. you know from a deck of cards and he dropped it like very nonchalantly he just right. And I bent over to pick it up because it, it fell with the, the image side down. So mm -hmm. I picked it up and the image was, uh, you know, from the tarot cards. And I had no oh. knowledge of tarot, zero. I wasn't into that uh, yet. <laughs> and I turned it around and it said, you know, death. Uh, yeah. And I just had, you know, a little heart attack. Yeah, you know? I'm <laughs> sure. When you're all new to that, it's like, like the oh, most shit. horrible <laughs> image you can imagine. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that frightened me. So I looked up at him to, to, you know, get clarification, but he was gone. And then I woke up and I, I fell oh back into my body. Yeah. Uh, and that's when I started looking into tarot and also more significantly into dream symbology. And, and in both of these paths, uh, death in many, many occasions, you can, you can never say this is what goes for all. You know? Right. Right. But in many occasions represents a large transformation mm -hmm. and i realized a new chapter in my contact with them had been born so right. it was a birth rather than a death he had just told me now you know it's been us all along and i still <laughs> didn't want to embrace right. the idea mm -hmm. of extraterrestrials because i still had that memory in my head of you know the movies with the violence yeah um that's the other thing they were doing i think they were they were they were putting that hurdle in front of you, that fear hurdle that you were going to have to get over one way or the other. Yeah, you're right, so right. In, right in front of you. You got and, it. I mean, like if, you know, move through it. Face well, it. Exactly. And you, yeah. and wow, you did remarkably. I must say, I think most people would have been like freaked out talking to their therapist about it for about 10 years. Well, 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 uh... <laughs> well, you know what I mean, though. I think, I mean, uh, I, only five years later, I was at that point. I'm not going to say I skipped that point. You're right. Just what you described. Because the visitations kept happening and they became more and more vivid and tangible. And I was growing, you know, more into an adult and mm -hmm. starting to feel uh, I was having some brain injury. Something right. was really Thank seriously you. wrong with me. Um, wow. Because I, I started to open up to friends because at some point I had so many out of body experiences. I woke up tired, like super tired every day. And I had to go to school. So mm. I was, and I had to 
cycle, take a train, walk a bit to the school. So there's this whole thing. And then on the way, you meet your classmates, right? Yeah. So I remember being in the train and speaking to some of my friends that I really trusted and just go, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I have these dreams. They just exhaust me. Sometimes I wake up. I don't know where I am. I just don't know. And it takes me hours to land back into my body. And they were like, well, that is not normal. And I I thought it was. Did you know that up until then, (laughs) I was already 22, 23. I honestly thought everybody had had dreams like that. I didn't know what an out-of-body experience was called. Mm -hmm. I thought people just had that and they nonchalantly called them dreams. And I was something must be wrong with me because I apparently I'm not capable of processing my dreams. Everybody else is capable of processing adventures like that during the night, except for me. So that's what I was thinking. (laughs) And then I figured out that wasn't so normal. And I, and I did seek help in fact. So that would be the next chapter. (laughs) So, so I know that the help that you sought also became pivotal in on your journey if i remember mm-hmm. correctly um but i just want to comment because <laughs> the last guest i had on um we spoke a little bit about astral projection and 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 dreams and 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 those things and and i i i believe that um i believe that that every night every soul you know when when there is any kind of actual sleep you know and the cycle happens then then the soul has a chance to you know take a break from the body and that you know there's an there's all kinds of agendas um as far as like oh what's going on you know and some of it i i think that everybody's soul is busy when the body is sleeping now how busy and how much that person remembers depends on every you know individual it's a some like I, I very rarely remember my dreams, but um, lately I've been remembering them more and more. And it's tough for me to figure out why when I go through these spurts where I can remember a lot. But I, it sounds to me like you were like um, your soul has like a closet astral projection addiction. <laughs> like it sounds like you like you were you were going astral all the time, like um, a lot, a you lot. know, yeah, several times. A month and then also my dreams were very lucid yeah um and i still remember a lot of my dreams so i can sometimes remember several ones when i wake up i can go back like a full back That's cool i don't That's know a- how it's really crazy i can also decide yeah. pretty much decide not to i will remember the last one mm-hmm. but then i can say okay that's it i don't need to remember anything else i'm gonna get up now yeah or i might even be in a hurry for some appointment and just jump out of bed like everybody else does. Yeah. <laughs> and then stand in the shower and look at something. I don't know. The shampoo bottle. I don't know. Yeah. And then be reminded or, yeah. This was in my dream. Wait a minute. What was happening? And all I have to do is close my eyes. And um, I, I, I describe it as full back, full back. Yeah. Forget. That's an ability that a lot of people would love to have. You know, I mean, I, I believe everybody can train it. It's yeah. it's like a muscle, I guess, you know, like when I described with the tarot card incident, uh, I wanted to understand dream symbology. That's so I was mm-hmm. close to 18 and I I decided I wanted to remember all my dreams. <laughs> Very <laughs> fanatic, wanting to solve the puzzle. I just wanted to understand what was going on. So I, I thought to myself, there must be more clues in my other dreams so i'm going to train this muscle and i basically it's in some books uh yeah. where they say this is how you can learn how to do that there's a lot I, of ways that maybe there are a lot they of don't, techniques yeah yeah exactly maybe they don't call it full back uh but what you definitely quote unquote shouldn't do is think forward so your day is ahead of you <laughs> linearly mm-hmm. Um, and as soon as you move in that direction with your mind, and I'm pointing directions, that's crazy because it's not really a direction. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as soon as you, well, that's what I would call move forward. As soon as you do that, you go away from the dream. So you basically turn around and you go back to the dream <laughs> and you bring it here. Hmm. Uh, or you bring yourself. I'll try that. The, I'll try that next, next time. I'm... Yeah, it's crazy, but you can tell your mind a direction in time, in chronological order, and then fuse 
with what you thought was a past event. You can do the same with future events, but that's a different subject. Right, <laughs> right. No, yeah. Maybe we'll get into that too later. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so you 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 saw a was it, was it a, a counselor or a, a, a therapist? Yes. Yeah. So I went to my first regular GP. I had no clue. I, also, I was not raised with the whole idea of alternative medicine or anything. That's all right. stuff I got into later. Um, but it wasn't in my family so much, this awareness. So I went to my GP, I said, well, these, I just called them intense dreams. They're keeping me awake, uh, or I wake up exhausted. So, um, and he said, have you been through a lot of stress? And I said, well, <laughs> this is stressful. And yes, um, definitely things have been, uh, adventurous in my childhood. There's been, you know, um, interesting you know, shifts between parents and lots of things going on. So he said, probably a good idea for you to just speak with someone. And I was up for anything at that point, because I thought, you know, I just want to get a good, decent night of sleep. Um, much of the exhaustion regarding these dreams was really as a result of me resisting the out-of-body experiences in many mm. occasions, because I just, you know, I want to to fit in, be a normal right. person and not have this stuff going on. So uh, there was a, a frustration in me as well. Even though some of these experiences were beautiful, I would have never wanted to miss them. Right. So this GP sent me to, um, I guess you would just call it a therapist, uh, sure. somebody to speak with. Um, but this guy, this man was or used to be a hypnotherapist. Oh, so, lucky you. My God. Yeah. And I had no idea how blessed I was with that. Mm -hmm. But I felt from the energy with which or from which he spoke with me, I felt truly heard and understood, which was a first in my life. And I just cried my eyes out the first session and and he hardly asked me anything. And I, and I just sensed I can speak here. I can speak mm. and I can actually be heard and seen. And that made a huge difference. Um, this is really from as a child feeling I can speak to anybody about this mm -hmm. to finally getting boo, early 20s. <laughs> and I was so happy. And he taught me in a nutshell. We went through, I think we worked six months together. And maybe I saw him all together 21 times. No. Um, and it went real good and real fast. And we did definitely touch upon childhood stuff, but he kept telling me, you're actually really fast with this. Um, cause I thought I was behind <laughs> on cleaning up this stuff in my yeah. life. And he said, no, no, no. People in their fifties come to see me about the exact same stuff right. that you feel was tough in your life. So I was okay. Uh, but still in a hurry. <laughs> of course. And then we went through a lot of stuff. But the most important thing he gave me, which was a 180 degree transformation in my dream life. Let's just call it that or multidimensional adventures. He told me in those very simple words, he said, it doesn't matter what is visiting you in your experience or what you're observing at night. All of that is somehow connected to your subconscious and therefore must be part of you. I never, ever came up with that myself up until then. And so you're speaking to yourself. And so you can speak back. Right. <laughs> and perhaps when you keep sending them away, as soon as, as you get conscious of right. the interaction, uh, they keep coming back because you're not listening. Right. <laughs> So how about you try interact with it? So that was his suggestion. I was okay, just super terrified, but on the other hand, exciting homework. Mm -hmm. So I tried that. And literally from the night I started, you know, acknowledging the presences and um, moving with it instead of against it, uh, everything changed. And I have hardly ever had a terrified um, right. experience yeah. after that because it was, I know, yeah, I felt like, oh my God, I know how to tango. This isn't even hard right. at all. I just resisted it. You, you started going with the flow. Yes, exactly. It's so, yeah. you know, uh, we, we spoke, we've we spoke before and I mentioned this before, but I always, I always know there's people who are going to 
actually listen to this whole podcast who are, you know, going down this path and, and quietly interested in how a person comes to channel. And some of them are just getting into channel material and others are, are, you know, just finding more, more channels to learn from. But, you know, I always say like, it's the inward journey that you take at first you've you know you find yourself looking for external validation like um i'm not like it is is this all in my head and the answer to that question is always yes <laughs> because where else could it be it could it could never it has to be all in your head and i don't mean in a sense that you're making it up i just mean that that's where everything is you can only perceive things that come through your you know your your body so it's it, we have human beings are incredible we're incredible uh, you know in respect that we we have all these notions that we're taught about what is normal and what is that and then from those notions we give ourselves anxiety and we give ourselves you know panic attacks uh or we deem ourselves better than or less than and that's it's so crazy because it's 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 all here it's all within us um mm -hmm. so your story is mind-boggling but i just encourage people who are going down this path to continue to validate yourself continue mm -hmm. to yeah have confidence uh, and know that if you're on this journey the answers will come the, mm -hmm. you know the, they'll come from the craziest places if you if you if you persist you know they will be there you will get answers and nuance and detail but you know rome wasn't built in a day it takes takes time you know mm -hmm. at this point in your journey you haven't even you haven't even been exposed to to channel material yet right mm -mm. no none of it but that was soon to change. <laughs> yes, tell, tell me oh, well, that story again. Well, the first, the first thing that needed to be addressed was the fact that they were extraterrestrial, right? I mean, I still was in denial of that. So I finished my um, trajectory with this. Um, uh, yeah, counselor. Assist, yeah, with the yeah. assistance that I got. Uh, therapist, yeah. yeah. So, um and I had good nights of sleep and I was so happy and I was thriving. I was really, really enjoying, you know, you know, my life again. Um, and it was only a few months, I guess, after finishing that trajectory that I had my first UFO sighting. And I was with a friend in a park um, and uh, it was at night and it was a clear sky, except for some tiny, you know, those see-through how do you call them? Clouds? The cloud. Yeah, the clouds. Whips or they're like almost like misty, a few lines of those. Very, sure. very transparent clouds. So transparent you could see the stars through them. So more like a misty here mm -hmm. and a misty there. Uh, so that's what the sky looked like. And we were stargazing and me and my friend, he had his head next to mine and our bodies were opposite directions. So we could talk together, but mm -hmm. look at the stars and have a lot of space to lay um arms stretched and just enjoy mm -hmm. laying in the grass and it was a beautiful i think late summer night and at some point um we we're just looking we weren't saying anything in that moment uh just looking at stars and a triangular ufo <laughs> mm -hmm. appears in one of those transparent clouds mm -hmm. on one side for me the left for him is right uh just appears there blip it's there and right slides over us into another one of those clouds and disappears like literally wow. like turning on and off a switch that's how immediate and the sliding was like over glass it was absolutely soundless and and no wiggles no turbulence right absolutely perfect straight line over our heads with red lights on each corner uh and it, it was just it took long enough for us to take a deep breath in because we both saw it and it was we just were dumbstruck we were just <gasps> like yeah. that and then it just and it disappeared and both of us jumped up like on our own <laughs> right. side turned our heads looked at each other and um exactly at the same time we said 
did you see that to each other <laughs> with That's really awesome. big eyes and in Dutch. <laughs> and, that's awesome. <laughs> and and then we spoke about it the rest of the night. Um, what was the feeling? We, what was the feeling you got when you? I mean, oh, well, of course we said the word UFO, but I never thought of that before. Like, not really. I guess there was a hesitancy in me to go into that. But direction. how did you feel? How did you feel though when you when after you, when when you saw it after you saw it that that night talking to him? What was the feeling like? What 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 feeling did it leave you with? having seen it my heart was pounding in my chest i just yeah. felt you were excited activated but i didn't know what to do with it i was really and i, I and i had a very strong you know my mind still wanted to be in control of the world it was right. much more you know this insecure early adolescent <laughs> mm -hmm. um and also i didn't want to like to my towards my friend too quickly go into the oh it must have been a ufo but i right. really we didn't have an explanation and he was starting about army projects and stuff and i'm like well <laughs> i don't know i don't know so that's what i said i don't know might be i don't know uh very you know, advanced stuff if that was there at the time very very advanced it's, then. i i always <laughs> go back to the feeling i mean so it's funny i had one of my one of my best friends uh who is uh, renowned these days, a renowned atheist, at least he, he clings to that, but you know, he's had a lot of tragedy in his life and mm -hmm. he's one of those people who um, hasn't quite gotten over the, you know, the, uh, the bemoaning and the, the, the victimization part mm -hmm. of it. And, um, he hasn't really properly grieved, but uh, he, he's you know when i started this we have a, a funny relationship but there's a lot of what we call ball busting okay <laughs> um which is jaw breaking i don't know there's probably a less um kind of derogatory slang to use but you know it's a lot of joking or teasing each other and he's when i started the channel he saw the ufos and he was like do you ever see one and, I, and at, at the time i hadn't ever seen one in in the physical and he said uh man he was like it was like a religious experience when i saw it. and i was like that's that's wild coming from you mr atheist i was like what is a religious experience for you he was like it was just so it was so cool man it was so i i felt so good you know it was just it was, it was funny to hear him be so affected by this thing that he saw you mm -hmm. know even though his usual state of mind is is kind of less prone to that kind of mm -hmm. ecstatic state. <laughs> so I, so I it just, I always like to ask people how they, how they felt when they saw it. And also I think because there are, I know there are government projects. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we know that our government is quietly, you know, kind of tinkering in the dark with some of the technology they found, but I always think, well, those UFOs probably don't leave you feeling like anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you see them, maybe you're like, wow, but it's just different because that's not a, a consciousness mm. event. Like I think connecting with a, a UFO can be a, a true UFO. Well, yeah. thank you for, for sharing that. And it's so, yeah, it's wonderful to hear. I mean, for some people like your friend, I think mm. it has to be this, this is the, his crack in the, in the, mm -hmm. you know, how do you even say that in, in the, cement wall that always seems to be up there yeah you know and i guess the cracks for me were already the dreams and uh, out of body experiences and then this was kind of like on top of that having a daytime experience you know i just um i felt somehow responsible for my friend <laughs> oh okay who wasn't having a lot of history with these type of experiences and somehow I went into caretaker mode and also didn't want to lose face. So it was just right. crazy because I kind of liked him and it was, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you're young. And I said, I, that, I wasn't feeling, I, I knew my heart was telling me something right. huge just happened, but I, I pushed it down. And um, what gave it away that this was a legit a thing <laughs> mm -hmm. were my dreams for the next week after that event, because for oh, okay. a full week, ETs everywhere and they weren't yeah. hiding anymore. This was this, you need to see this. It was right. really in my face. So, and they showed up 
even as a cartoon. They literally, they <laughs> threw at me all possible um, screen memories. That's what we call in the scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, the memory, like the animals in a sense, were a screen memory for me to not be upset by their actual shape. So they threw at me, you know, all kinds of cards. Like we've shown you animals, ourselves right. as cartoons, ourselves as the big cliche gray, right. with the big cute eyes and also a little scary, like all different forms. Just know that this is what you're dealing with in a sense. It's kind of what they showed me, but they came overall very loving, joking, kind of like mm -hmm. kickaboo. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, with peace signs, literally like this, literally holding hands of like, hey, we come in peace. We know how to communicate your way. Yes, this yeah. is your language. <laughs> sure. And that's when I started thinking, okay, so this UFO, this was really a UFO. And by then I was back home. I could do my own research. So I started Googling on it for the very first time in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I found more people had seen triangular craft. That was quite a shock in a sense. And that brought me to websites. And there were only a handful of those at the time, um, websites that were talking about, um, the, uh, classic abduction stories. Oh and stuff yeah. Like that. Yeah. And that's where my research almost immediately ended because as soon as I started going through those check boxes, you know, of people who yeah. had these type of experience, I clicked almost all of them and I, and I just got terrified all of a sudden, even though yeah. they had presented themselves so lovey dovey, I thought, okay, I don't want to have anything to do with this. And I was literally terrified for recognizing so many of the um, quote unquote symptoms sure. and characteristics. Because it's you were having experience that was parallel, but you weren't having those feelings, but the people who were getting those stories out there were traumatized by their experiences, which of course we know, shock and trauma sells you know it's it's big business so of course those were the stories that they they published and you know there's a lot of reasons why that is but that's it's so funny how we're we're our experience of something can be affected you know we're, we're such a collective consciousness and whether we mm -hmm. care to admit it or not and however independent we feel we are you know if if, if you're in a room and I mean, this happens to me a lot, you know, and I, and I try to conform a little bit, but I could be really enjoying something and that everyone else is taking very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you get, you don't just get looks, but you get energy that says inappropriate or knock it off or, you know, like, and you're like, so you change, you begin to change your experience mm -hmm. to match what other people are going through. And, it, and it's, I think it's kind of a human nature thing, um, <laughs> which, which is, it's crazy to hear that that happened to you too, in this instance, which mm -hmm. I mean, it's not surprising. You're, you know, you're, you're a human being. So. Yeah. And I was still in that phase wanting to, in a sense, fit in, but also knowing that I probably never would. <laughs> yeah. So, and then eventually, um, well, we've come a long way, I must say. I mean, um, that's what I found on the internet back then. And now there's oh, so yeah. much more. I mean, just look at your own show. Yeah, People can go and watch your show. Wow. I just found this one website with this doom title to it already. Like uh, <laughs> Nibiru, the earth will be destroyed right. .com, something like that. And that's where I found the first tiny bits of oh information uh, on this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, what is this kind? What is this dark uh, There's a lot <laughs> room? of those, yeah. <laughs> and suddenly. Uh, and so um, I closed that door. I did take notice of the idea of, okay, it might be extraterrestrial. I always knew it wasn't human. That was a mm -hmm. fact for me because that's a very different vibration, entirely different radio station. Right. <laughs> so, um, okay. I, I stored that some, somehow in the back of my right. mind. And then um, I started feeling this really strong urge to meditate. And again, I've not been raised with this. None of my friends were doing it. I just suddenly felt I had to do that. And as soon as art school was uh, finished and I got my diploma, I went to Asia and I traveled for three months. I backpacked and I visited monasteries and I learned how to properly meditate <laughs> And every there's a single, game changer. That was a game changer. Oh yeah. my God. Everything, everything. I mean, first the hypnotherapist really assisted me. And then this was a deepening yeah. um, of the conscious interaction. 
uh, and I still had no idea where all this was going to go. And I still didn't know about channeling. Mm -hmm. So I went there and all I sensed, and I love that you, you, you shared earlier in this conversation, Yeah, how you, you encouraged people to trust their own little nudges and their inklings. And mm -hmm. because this is a good example of that. Um, as soon as I started doing the meditation, okay, I learned it in Thailand. So it was, mm -hmm. you had to like bow to the ground and for a second, your forehead touches the ground three times and then you start your meditation. Mm -hmm. This is like honoring a Buddhist um, mm -hmm. ritual. Of course, you can meditate in a million ways. This is just one. Right. Uh, but what I felt physically every single time I started just making the first motion towards the ground and get up again, I got this... Um, shiver down my spine like somebody would run their finger all the way from the top of my head to my um how do you call it? the back of your yeah uh, yeah the uh spine <laughs> the bottom yeah. part tailbone yeah yes the, the tailbone the, the root chakra whatever you want to call it yes yeah, so all the way down and i just got this this waterfall sensation every time and you know what i thought to myself wow this is so delightful no wonder a lot of people like to meditate <laughs> <laughs> and again, I was completely assuming that my experience was the same as everybody else's. <laughs> that is so funny. I know. So... You know the story of when when um, um, Abraham, I'm sorry, Abraham, Esther and Jerry Esther, start, Esther and Jerry meditated for they did they meditated in a, in chairs that were oh. back to back in their oh, okay. in their study and and you know Jerry was the one who got. Esther into first Jane Roberts's book, which we, mm -hmm. we, we talked when we had talked before. And, and so they decided they were going to, they were going to meditate every day together. I, um, and Jerry would always say, <laughs> he was like, I'll tell you what, uh, I was meditating and we wouldn't, but we would meditate in science. Um, Esther always sounded like she was having a tickle party with someone behind me. It was so distracting. She was always <laughs> laughing and having a good time. And it sounded like a party and we're supposed to be meditating. He's like, but you know, what was I going to say? But that was her experience meditating. She was, she'd be cracking up. And, and I just, you know, I, I had to crack up at that because everybody has a different, you know, when you're in meditation, everybody has a different experience, but, but it's not, it's funny. Cause I, I often find myself, uh, you know, laughing and, crying tears of joy when i'm mm -hmm. in the middle of a meditation yep. and i just think if people were there they would be like what the hell's wrong with this guy He's that's what started uh, happening for me <laughs> later down the road i had the crying pretty yeah. early on the the cry with relief and you don't even know for what yeah and and later i had the giggles as well i thought you were going to tell that wonderful story about esther who when she started oh, channeling well, Avery, nose. her nose um, i mean i laughed so hard so when Abraham started coming through for her, um, apparently uh, she started spelling out letters one yeah, she was by one moving with and, her nose. <laughs> and they didn't, they were like, she was like, I'm not doing this. And so then they realized <laughs> that it was moving in the, in the shape of a letter. And so then right? Jerry would, would write down the shape, I think. And then eventually she moved to, and, to, and, and, let it come out of her hand and then it came out of her hand and then eventually she began to vocalize um right and which is a, which was totally a different experience than than jane roberts had i know jane roberts was your first exposure to channeled material channeled material mm -hmm. and yeah. i yeah and i love what and your I friend guess, oh i'm sorry go what, ahead what, what did your friend tell you when she handed you that book come again what did your friend tell you when she handed you that book again oh she couldn't make any sense out of it and then she said <laughs> And, and I was so surprised because she handed me the book, um, Seth Speaks, uh, from by Jane Roberts, who channeled Seth. And she said, I can't make any sense out of this. I'm guessing, no, I'm not, I'm guessing, I'm quite sure you can. That's so weird. And I was like, how can you, how do you know? How do you know if you can't make sense out of it? <laughs> the hell of a thing to say to someone. It's like, I just- I can't make sense out of this fucking thing. Here, you take it. Yeah. Yeah. This is maybe you can book, right? this book's crazy it's right up your alley no, no exactly it's, that's how it sounded <laughs> so this is uh i don't know if you guys can see this this is mm -hmm. the, called the early years what i love about this book is it it details the whole story of how jane and her 
husband, right? Yeah, it was her husband at the time. Um, Robert. Robert, that they began experimenting with a Ouija board. She was big into uh, ESP and, and extra, you know, extra sensory perception, all these things during her time. And she was writing a book about it. They got a Ouija board. This was before Hollywood took the Ouija board and turned into the devil incarnate. So they didn't have all these preconceptions about what would happen. And sure enough, um, this entity came through and this mm -hmm. book goes into detail, great detail about it and how that evolved um, into mm -hmm. the entity that was Seth, mm -hmm. an incredible um, educational entity. I don't know how else to describe it. it was, yeah. You know, so much um, wisdom and understanding about humans and our souls and, and what the hell we're doing here came from those books. So highly recommended. Um, that if this book is thicker, the, 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 the other one's called uh, the validity of the soul, right? Is that, or the, is that how, is that the title, the title of the, just the book without the, all the uh, early stories about how it came to be. The I have of, only yeah. read Seth speaks. Seth speaks. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Seth speaks the validity of the soul. Or something like that. Oh, all right. right. I didn't know yeah. that was the subtitle. Um, yeah. So that, one but yeah i i fully i fully uh, agree with you and it's highly recommended material um one of one of the purest most high quality channelings that i know of yeah absolutely really it'll really blow you away yes uh so and it blew me away so when i got that book in my hands <laughs> so after learning how to meditate i got into yoga i got into changing my diet i already by the way changed to vegetarian at the age of 12 again as the only one in my family uh, this was partially because of what I saw the grace showed me of possible future earth. Mm. So um, I had this very strong, okay, we have to take care of the planet. And this sounds like such a cliche. I mean, a lot of people are like, yeah, right. The ETs are here to tell us to take care of the planet, you know. Um, but oh, they would yeah. Never say that. yeah, well, oh, well, I really, there are people. <laughs> I know, I know it's crazy, but. We we'll refer to it like that, but um, well, Yes, well, the greys definitely very much underlined that. And I got to see how off it went on their side. Um, so the greys are a great learning lesson for humanity. And oh, what, man. Especially yes. at this, turn, this, this crossroads right that now. we're at right now with technology. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the myth of the story of the greys that, that has been you know, widely told and shared in many contact experiences and not just contact experiences, but you know, there's there's a lot of um, government documentation of of these of these stories coming from you know actual um, ETs or they don't they call them um, something different Abe's I don't they, they have alien yeah. biological entity I don't know they, they have a different name yeah. for them something um, like that about the 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 civilization that took a, their Earth. You know, and and basically did what we seem to be on a you know one of our paths can definitely lead down this road if we don't wake up and start taking care of our planet and stop polluting it with and using it you know like it was ours to uh, to use you know but but really coming into some sustainable natural you know looking to nature to do what it knows how to do with us, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the greys ended up having to, um, at least in this version of their reality that I learned about, you know, they, they, they could no longer reproduce. Hello. Mm -hmm. Our sp the, the male sperm count has dropped 55% unfettered totally with, there's been no stop in the downward trajectory for the last 40 years. We have oh, wow. fifty-five percent of the sperm count gone, and if we continue year by year, wow. in forty years we will be at zero. So there's your male that. fertility right there. <gasps> wow! Um, where did you where did you get this information? I didn't. I, I didn't from, even know. There's that. a woman who she's trying. She she she's trying to get you know uh, publicity with her scientific findings. She was on Joe Rogan about a year ago. I'll I'll send mm. you a link to the episode. Yes, she's please. Been, you know the media. If the media covers this, then they got to cover the corporations, you know, the pollution that's happening and, and all the reasons why this may be. This woman found it to be 
um, because of the widespread plastic pollution that happens. And when a mother is exposed at a certain time in her early pregnancy, the result is devastating for the male offspring. You know, Mm -hmm. they, they, everything about their, their sex is retarded for lack of a better word, Mm -hmm. even, even, and they know because they can measure the physical manifestations of this disruption in their, in their genes. And it's Mm -hmm. from the pollution. I mean, it's from, so we're, we, in so many ways, we are teetering on the edge of this, you know, going down this path with between the technology and the, yeah, the, the, the pollution and the, the, we have a lot to clean up, but Mm -hmm. I think the grays serve as a wonderful uh, lesson. And then to Mm -hmm. to finish it off, they ended up having to um, clone First, they ended up having to reproduce solely in a laboratory. Then, then eventually they had to, the planet was just, it was, they could no longer even stay inhabited on it. So they had to, they had to end up in space and they were cloning themselves. And then they found a way to, well, I think they had some help, but they, but they mm-hmm. found a way to, I guess, how would you say it? Uh, to, to, to come into our reality because they needed viable dna they mm-hmm. they didn't they didn't have it and so the abduction program the this was agreed upon you know and that brings us to another point that we should talk about you know um you know your soul and your the choices that were made kind of without you being conscious of them you know a lot of mm-hmm. the abduction phenomenon the, the true abduction phenomenon happened because of this agreement that took place kind of above our heads, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe we can, maybe you can help explain that last part a little better. <laughs> it's a tricky subject is, for yeah. some people. Yeah. Um, as I understand it. And of course I, I don't, I wouldn't ever want to um, give the impression that I know it all or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, we're all together as a human species uh, looking at it through, you know, um, the keyhole of the door, and and the door is just starting to open. We just we can only see through that little crack of light, maybe that's coming through. But that I mean, the information that is out there to know for us about our true selves. I mean, our soul uh, connections, all of this. How how do we interact with our greater selves? We're just as a species beginning to venture into that. I mean, gurus always knew. I mean, there's lots of information oh, yeah. hidden hidden in books and, you know, and also definitely uh, the Bible and Kabbalah and Buddhism. And there's sure. so much, so much there. But it, especially in our Western society, we're relatively new. But on the other hand, I'm really optimistic because people like you and so many other people are so active in the field right now, assisting our end of the spectrum, the Western modernized world, to also start to catch up on this deeper inner knowing, which is so much more on the surface level in, uh, in my experience, in Asian countries and um, yeah. Africa, for instance, there, there's much more roots, you know, like knowing and also conversations with the earth and an understanding of nature. Parts of and South Bra- America, Brazil, certainly. Brazil, yes, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and also the Inuits, the the people from the the poles, oh uh, yeah, they can stand the cold like they're wow, <laughs> deep respect. Um, so anyway, um, you said how does it work with this soul connection? And okay, so this is how our June explained it to me. He said if you were part of this program, and uh, again, if it, just to nuance it. Uh, abduction is uh, the word that we usually use, but so it's an agreement. It is an agreement. So there is right. a part of you, they are not allowed to actually just go and take you to interfere in such a way if you hadn't said yes to it on some level. Now, it's right. very well possible. And it was for me. I mean, I'm speaking from experience. My ego was convinced I didn't want this. Right. So that part part of me didn't remember at the time and simultaneously I sometimes came back with the most amazing memories and then I would be grateful it was just you know this constant insecurity that Mm -hmm. I really despised back in the days 
And I thought I had to have it all figured out and that, that this was abnormal and I was judging myself for it. So it was the whole being young, right. <laughs> wanting to fit in and stuff. Um, but so this is how Arjun explained it to me. He said, before you came to earth in this human adventure, you got to see previews of potential future versions of earth. Mm. You got like little um, film snippets of this is what's possible. This is what's possible. This is in the range of probability. If you choose to live roughly like this, you know, or roughly like that. So you're given outlines or blueprint options. One of those options contained a multidimensional interaction ongoing. So you know it before you incarnate. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, you're excited as a soul, you're excited about pursuing a very active, <laughs> multidimensional weaving of the web, for lack of a better yeah. term. Exploration, sure. Yeah. yeah, which involves also the access to your physical DNA. So your, your mind, body, and soul, you're all in. And you can choose... Yeah. Yeah, you can choose whether you want to go that deep or whether you want to be more on a surface level layer, part of the program, or whether you don't want to be part of the program at all, or whether you just rather, um, yeah, I don't know, have the ability. We all have abilities. We all have some multidimensional spectrum that we expertise in is my strong right. conviction for every human being. No exception. You don't have to be special for that. We all are special in that right. way. Some people just remember or activated it or, and some are in the process of doing that. So waking up to that, but exactly. we all got it and we all need each other because we all carry a part of the puzzle. I don't know, you know, the whole image, but the more people speak about their experience and their understanding of that soul connection, the more we can put them all together, compare and see what's the red threat that binds them all together. So mm -hmm. I don't, no claim to say that because Arjun says this, this must be how it is. I don't know. Right. This is this is what I was it's, told. It's a perspective, right? Exactly. So, according to him or to them, to the IL, uh, this is what I decided to do to be very, you know, full on <laughs> with right. that. And then the surprise for the for the for, well, I don't know if they were the first, but the grace that at that point came into my bedroom and were you know, whoa, she can see us. Um, I think they didn't expect me to be so consciously aware of this journey uh, mm -hmm. at such an early age. Maybe they understood I signed up for that type of consciousness later down the road, but not right. so early. They so were just checking in on, on the project. And then you're like, oh. <laughs> in a sense, maybe. Like, oh, great. Yeah. It's, it's already. <laughs> maybe we'll be back. <laughs> not <laughs> this. Yeah. Not this. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't, 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 okay, we got to go. We're yes. scaring her. Let's go back up, back up out of the room. <laughs> back, 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 back. <laughs> you know, it's it. just something. So it's, it, it, I feel like that's what happens in a create in a, in a in a funny kind of way. I mean, I, uh -huh. I hear a lot of stories of, about you know, and and they're from highly credible people who have no reason to lie, who won't even give right. their you know their their most of them are are anonymous, and you just you just pick out the common threads, you know, like sometimes there's a telepathic connection that happens in the strangest places um, with people who, you know, like you, they, you see them and I'm not saying this happened to me, but I, I just, I read a lot of the stories and I hear a lot of the stories and they all have some common threads to them. And that's, you know, it's not like, cause these people are all watching Gaia and they're all making the same thing up. This, these, some of these stories date back to the seventies, the sixties, you know, and, and, they lead up to our date, our present date. But this is like, I saw these two people, one of the, they were really tall. They were really good looking. They had really blue eyes. They were kind of really oddly dressed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, does anyone see any, you know, I'm looking around and no one else is paying any attention to them. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Why is that person wearing that weird outfit? We're in church. <laughs> and, and like, and then all of a sudden they turn and they look and, and then they can hear the this the thoughts this couple's having, and there's like that person can hear us and see us, and it's like what? And then the other one turns and looks. It's like you just can't make this shit up. It's like wow, this know, happened and, to someone you spoke to, or is this? No, a, well, your, this happened. Own... To, I was reading the testimony um, given to this. Uh, her name is Linda Moulton Howe. Uh, she's mm -hmm. an she's an old school 
she's like the OG of investigative reporting. She's been collecting evidence and data, everything from abduction stories to whistleblowers. She's been, she's probably 75, 80 years old. She has a, a, a YouTube channel called earth files. Some really wow. fascinating wow. stuff nice. on there. Um, she gets a lot of the military whistleblowers cause they trust her. They know that she can keep them anonymous. Mm. Um, she's, she's, I, I only discovered her a couple of years ago, but she's been writing books. You know, she covered the abduction phenomenon. She was an Emmy award winning uh, investigative journalist, I guess, you know, and then when she started to commit to this, you know, off mainstream route, of course she was shunned, but the integrity of her work has always been intact, you know, not, mm. she, and I've noticed that, well, well, that's another, I won't go into too much about that, but if it, but you can check out some of her, some of her stuff on, on her YouTube channel. It's pretty fascinating what she gets. She collects a lot of testimony um, from people who, who claim to have had these interactions. And um, There are so many, yeah. there are so many. I, um, I didn't know this name just yet. And thank you for sharing. And also sure. for the viewers or listeners so much. It's so nice to have some, data or resources to fall back on and what I, I just wrote it down because I, I'm going to forget it uh, Mary Rodwell is another really interesting researcher uh, woman from Australia and she is a pro I'm guessing in her 70s by now maybe um, and she has been collecting also hundreds of thousands oh, of cool. testimonies so from children too really really fascinating again with drawings and yeah. uh, all kinds of stuff that I never knew somebody was collecting that while I was going through it, you know, hmm. so, uh, but I didn't know about her. And now, now I know how work and she's, on, she has her YouTube channel too. Oh, I think I do know her. I think I have white I hair, think... short hair. Well, she, she was on, I think she was on Gaia. I think she had a special on Gaia. Oh, really? Okay. Maybe just a single show on one of somebody else's uh, mm -hmm. series, but I, I think that's where I may have saw her. I was, oh. yeah. And well, you see some of those drawings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she also started working with um, scientists. So oh, cool. uh, they made a whole program. And then if you think, if you believe you had an experience, an encounter, you could fill out this like 50 questions questionnaire. Uh, and it would be, it, it all goes through the same program. And right. they're looking for similarities. Nice. Um, it's incredible. It's incredible. So many people on our planet today yeah, have had contact. So if, yeah. if, 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 if just that fact was known, if, if right? people realized how <laughs> truly common a phenomenon it is. Exactly. It wouldn't be such a, a taboo. I mean, you know, these days it's not nearly as taboo, but let's be real. You know, people still are in that very conditioned mindset that anybody who says this may or may not be crazy. And that's mm -hmm. not true. I mean, it's true that anybody may or may not be a little crazy, but what's crazy anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but these stories have nothing to do with that. Um, you know what I want to talk about? I I, I I would love to talk about the the mantids. Um, we, hmm. we we I think we both have stories to share about. It. Um, but what an you know if you've ever seen a praying mantis, the the mantids are usually represented in that in that way. Isn't it mm -hmm. odd? Don't you find it odd that out of all the insects, first of all, I think humans have this inordinate fear of insects that is deeply rooted in our <laughs> collective psyche that comes from you know probably trauma that we've had with insectoids and mm -hmm. wars and other dimensions and alternate realities but because why would you if people are so scared of bugs it's crazy to me when i you know i, I think i learned this from from rob from rob gothier i think he's the one who and i and i was like oh my god yeah that makes perfect sense we're so scared of repta you know like a, a bug us like ah you know we flip out but but when you look at a praying mantis you know how it's different even mm -hmm. though we call it a praying mantis there's something about the praying mantis that is so fascinating to us mm -hmm. and we just want to watch them and take pictures of them and we have such a fascination with them um so so when I learned about the mantids, I was like, oh, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of like, aha, uh aha -huh, uh -huh moments, you know? Yeah. Why? Well, just, I've always loved, I've, I've always been scared of 
bugs, but I've always loved praying mantises. Oh, so I that, was the aha, that was yeah. the aha moment for you. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I had a crazy experience uh, with red ants when I was a kid, which was hilarious to everyone watching, but not that much fun for me. I was qu- real quick. I was playing. <laughs> I was, we were playing home run derby and I was standing, we were playing with golf balls and metal bats. So you can hit a golf ball really far with them. Sorry. My dog is bumping into my mic. You can hit a <laughs> golf ball really far with a metal bat. And so I was standing way outside the home run fence line and I was wearing sweatpants. They were gray and they had a hole in the center of the knee. And um, I didn't realize uh, that I was standing on, I must've been standing on it. And I just had this, like, I was like trying to keep an eye out for the balls, you know, cause I wanted to catch <laughs> one. And I started to get this itch in my knee and I was like, what's going on with this? And I'm, I'm scratching, I'm scratching, I'm scratching. And finally I looked down and my whole leg is covered in red ants and they're pouring into the hole of my sweatpants. Wow. And, was, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I run and I, I'm screaming. I got ants in my pants and I'm we're, <laughs> this little league field is next to a highway. And I'm literally stripping in like getting into my underwear as I'm running and falling. And everyone's like, everyone's cracking up watching. They have no idea what's happening to me. <laughs> and then I'm running around in my underwear and I'm like stomping on my pants thinking that that's going to kill the red ants, you know? And, uh. and, and I'm like, um, can someone go get me a towel? Does anyone have a change of sweatpants? <laughs> Cause wow. uh, here but I am in my gonna, underwear. Yeah. It's going to really bite though. Like really. Yeah. Bite. They hurt. And then my knee was on fire afterwards. Wow. Um, wow. So it was a little All right. traumatic. They're funny. <laughs> Yeah, funny for the rest. <laughs> but yeah, wow. The so demented beings. Um, yeah, you told me in our earlier conversation that you had an experience with them, a uh, multidimensional experience, right? Yes. Um, so we can, yeah, we can both we can give our perspectives. Sure. I, I've had some experiences with them as a child. I knew they were connected to the grace, to the program, the idea of the hybridization. I still didn't understand what was going on back then, of course, but I knew they were there. Like they were often in the corner of a room. So if there were beings around me and doing whatever or speaking with me, they would be somewhere in the back. That's how I remember it. They were large. I could definitely see that. Well, that being is much bigger than these ones. Yeah. (laughs) Because they're standing all the way over there and they're like the same size. So they're much bigger. Um, and eventually, and, yeah, and were ahead. they were they physical or were, like so? I feel like um, they're this they're is almost, out of body. This is okay, an out of body experience. So they're almost like, and that's my experience too. Is their interactions with us are almost exclusively not they're non physical when you know that. So you get. Uh, I know when I had my experience, I, I got a I, I got a sense that I could see that their their silhouette is unmistakable, um, mm-hmm. but it was huge for for me and it was i mean it was there was three of them they were they were huge um but but they were definitely not physical <laughs> no no uh, so and just, just ne- yeah go ahead i've never seen these in my room with my eyes wide open this was always in another realm so i would be out of body so mm-hmm. that's that's right it's so yeah. it would be from our perspective it would be in the non-physical right. or higher dimensional um physical yeah but so my experience with them was uh and so future to us i hope anybody <laughs> that people can still follow along with what i'm saying right here it may sound like i'm rambling uh you have all these layers in, in dimensional realities mm-hmm. and uh future us is physical still but seems non-physical to us now so that will be the mm. short recap of how um higher dimensional or higher vibrational physical how that works right it's um, like density and and yeah yeah plus some is future right. <laughs> or it would be here now <laughs> right um just as if we were would be able to time travel back into time is what our june says at least if we go to the middle ages and we visit our ancestors uh forefathers we um will look semi-physical to them and glowing according right. to our June because and then we will look like a ghost to them or right. transparent or not really physical go far enough back and you won't be seen at all what does exactly. that say the implications of bandwidth that? yeah it says something about bandwidth 
And yeah. what you can allow yourself to harmonize with depends on relevance of your yeah. theme, your soul's theme. So there's lots of stuff completely outside of our bandwidth that we will never, ever get into contact with because most, it's not relevant for this life. Stuff. Most, yes, <laughs> most. Most is there. 99.99%. Yeah, a lot of nines there. <laughs> yeah, is out there. But it doesn't matter because whatever tiny fraction we can see is immensely fascinating. And we mm -hmm. haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg of that. So That's I'm right. not bored for a second. No, me either. <laughs> Me but um so the mantids i told you and i will share that again that with people if they would be interested for me their their um presence became more tangible when i started doing yoga and hmm. uh, i suddenly sensed that you can make a very physical connection with them even though they are non-physical mm -hmm. you can tune in or harmonize with the vibration that they represent themselves by um and anybody who has seen a praying mantis and we made this joke the last time i'll make it again <laughs> praying can be said in two ways yes it can <laughs> and the praying way i heard it as praying like to god <laughs> they do look like they're praying with neither for own. years it never even occurred to me that it might be praying as haunting. oh that's so funny that, wow. that's, that's how i first learned about them and i'm like oh that's a wonderful name seems very suitable you know praying right. mantis <laughs> That's funny. Wow. Coming from another language, you can easily make these type oh, of totally, mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> but when I started doing yoga, I could sense it. I just, I don't know how to say it even. It's just, yeah. it's the way they move. There's this knowledge of balance and the body. They're such body experts. They like are body experts. So they're, he they're healers. Doctors. Yes. Yeah, they're that's a civilization well. that is, they're, notorious uh healers you know and they work with i mean an unimaginable amount of species mm -hmm. um because yeah. they're so far along in their evolution and their consciousness they can be so many places and uh and I, you know they're they they're 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 inc they're incredible you know and that there's that i think that they're a part of a lot of um you know the the healing and the foundations of, of civil, certain civilizations you know they've, they've come to be a, a staple and they have a very for me at least a very feminine energy um mm -hmm. very loving very healing kind of um you know um just comforting very soothing um i had a crazy interaction with the men that when i was first getting it i was like gung-ho about all things ch channeled and i was training with channels to put myself in a channeling state and and i was doing it was going to be my first plant ceremony um and and uh, i was i, I had i've been marking the date and been meditating on it and you know i'm like just putting it out there you know if anyone wants to meet up uh, <laughs> i'll be in a, a state that is highly um receptive you know and, mm -hmm. I, and then i just let it go and totally forgot about it um and then that night came and I was, um, you know, I, I was in the middle of the plant ceremony and, and, and there was a lot going on, but, but I just remember looking up and, and seeing the, the three silhouettes and being like, oh my God, <laughs> I totally forgot that I was like making these meetings in my meditations for, for, for weeks. Cause I, you know, you just let it go. And then, and then I was like, of course I was like, oh, you're just, you're just making that up. I was like, there's only one way to find out. Mm -hmm. And so I started to have a dialogue. Um, and I would ask a question and nothing would happen. And then I would ask another question and I would get these full, I would, like this full body mm. um, response. Know, yeah. Like, like, yeah. like unmistakable. Mm. And, the, and then I would test it. I would, you know, I, I mean, I, I would be like, all right. You know, you're always the 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 ego and the the mental chatter is always wanting to say this isn't happening. It can't be happening. You're making this all up. Mm -hmm. Whether you're, you know, trying to learn to channel and things are coming through, you're there's a part of you that's always going to want to dismiss it. And mm -hmm. and what I'm encouraging everyone who's listened to us this far is don't listen to that part. 
don't <laughs> doubt yourself save yourself time and but and but trust your intuition trust what's coming through whether it be visual or vocal or any other mm -hmm. thing um because you'll you'll save time and frustration you know <laughs> take well a, yeah I would, I would say they can coexist because sure. harshing the rational mind is really hard and i do understand the the programmed skepticism that we are mm. brought up with and so what worked for me was to hear it acknowledge it and then continue with the experience anyway right <laughs> so basically i would inform the rational mind or the ego uh i hear you i understand i can totally see where this is coming from and i guess it's no not i guess i know it's good that you want to protect me i love yeah. you for it thank you like really really honor it for being you know whatever it's saying um and then it will come from less of an energy of wanting to dismiss your entire experience right and you won't be dismissing the entire ego's point of view and then you suddenly this space opens up where you can kind of like agree with the ego within yourself obviously uh okay i hear you i acknowledge it and we can always fall back on your plan a <laughs> i right. literally like promise my ego yeah i know you're there you got my back thank you right <laughs> And now I'm going to do this anyway. And I know you're here with me and we're safe. We're in right. this together and we're safe and let's experiment and better yet, let's play. Right. So I allowed myself to play and through the play, my ego surely, but you know, at some point slowly, but surely started to hop on board with my inner knowing because right. synchronicity started to prove um yeah. whatever hunches were coming it wasn't faulty and i mean it surprised me then and it sometimes still does i still so, sometimes am surprised just like everybody else thinking well that dream surely can't be true that must right. have been just a processing dream right um you know, that's because you saw that movie. That's because you spoke to that friend right. and she mentioned the same thing. My mind still does that. It's not as, you know, wanting to tyrannize the entire <laughs> thing right. as, as it was in the past, but it still does that. And it may do that until the day I die. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's just, I, I befriended it. And yeah, I you think, can make a good point. Yeah. Yes. Maybe. And that's just nice for people to know. Um, it's true. Thank you. We all we all have our own threshold of comfortability. Comfortability yeah. is that a word? I, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, you really. I. You know. You're never going to get rid of that voice that wants to make associations. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because that that's what that voice does. But but it. I guess it's it's also in how you understand them. You know, and leaving the possibility, leaving the possibilities open instead of. Yeah taking that route of, of right. you know, degrading or, or dismissing your experience as something that, that wasn't substantial or, or mm -hmm. the real. That's all I was trying to say, but thank you for. Yeah, no, for you're right. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, you walked the path and I know, you know, this <laughs> it just seems like, oh, this might be, you know, helpful for some people who are sure. listening and, but you're so right. Don't just dismiss your entire experience. That's where you, you got to start with. Yeah. gently training yourself to allow trust in your own inner knowingness right. and it's one of the last things that we've been raised to do and <laughs> we're learning to walk it looks like like that and we're crawling as a human yeah. species especially in the west again i feel we're crawling and we're slowly but surely maybe perhaps beginning to get up a stand you know yeah well events are happening in in nature that are forcing us to um, yes <laughs> which is incredible you know i mean animals they they have to learn to mm -hmm. to to stand and to walk and to run f much faster than than we do as humans being where we are in this quote food chain mm -hmm. but it's incredible to see how events cause people um to fall back into certain ways or to um, make gains in other ways. You know, I think that everything that's happening is just, it continues to wake people up um, mm -hmm. and kind of get them on their feet at least and yes. looking around as uh -huh. opposed to just kind of blindly crawling in the dark and being fed <laughs> and given a <laughs> bottle and True. told what 
put in front of a screen, you know, and told what to watch. So that's, it's all amazing. Um, you know, you, I love what you wrote. I read your, your blog about, uh, the, man, the mandala effect, um, mm. and, um, and what you wrote about cymatics. It's so, it's so ironic. And, um, I mean, it's not ironic, but, <laughs> um, it's not really ironic at all. That's not the right word, but, I, but it's, I, I'm, I'm getting, well, I'm getting this tattoo on my, my left side, which is um, it's, it's water crystal. And then mm-hmm. it's, it's going to morph into the cymactics of the solar system. Wow. That <laughs> um, sounds great. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. So, and, and I'm huge into cymatics and, and, and I, I also have Bashar's uh, in interstellar Enneagram. Oh, wonderful. In wow. This one. I don't know if, nice. you, can, if you can see yeah. it or not. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to do something a little more closer to home. When, and like, and we made this one like all geometry and oh, nice, kind of very universal. But Beautiful. Um, I was reading that, <laughs> and I was like, well, I love, I, I, I love what you wrote about the 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 blueprint that we, and, and I, I, the fact that you have this this great store of, of knowledge and can write about it continues to blow me away but you know you 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 mentioned the the resonance that we experience you know in physical reality and and if you've ever changed your if you've ever like taken taken time and been having a rough day and taken 15 minutes to go and change your state of being you you quickly realize that the way you experience the rest of your day is different than it mm-hmm. would have been so mm-hmm you know, things happen, you know, you know, that that are hard to imagine happening to you had you continued in the mindset you were in. Yep. Right. And so what I, what, what I would love to talk a little bit about to you is, is this, and I love you, you called it the, um, the, the mandala effect, you know, like, I think that's, was it you that called it that, or did you? I'm not sure because this blog is, several years yeah, it is, it is, yeah, it is <laughs> and i haven't reread it recently so uh i'm not sure what i was looking <laughs> into at the time but as far as i know right now the mandala effect is the phenomena where timelines split off and well what you just said m- makes yeah. sense in that idea generally that you seem to be on one path or a timeline with a lot of momentum into, you know, like a bit of a, oh, this day isn't working out for me. And then you you walk into a door yeah. and then all these things. And then if you would take 15 minutes, like you just suggested, you can <laughs> completely shift timeline and go into another one. But I guess yeah. the mandala effect, uh, as it's being referred to often in spiritual scenes, is when two people are both recalling the quote-unquote same memory from a different angle so Mm -hmm. they're in the same here and now moment sharing a shared reality it seems you're always looking from your own you know filter obviously but um i don't know okay so this is an example of exactly that one this is one people can even look up on the internet because it's so fun and crazy and such a mind bend when i ask you do you have the, the game monopoly in your home Unfortunately, yes. You do? Oh, you, you don't like it? <laughs> I hate it. I hated it as a child as well. Ah, oh, just with the money and everything. It's like never okay. ending. <laughs> I don't really, like my kids play it. I'm like, don't, you know, that game was invented to deter people from, from, and, and, and allow them to see the dangers of capitalism, the never ending dangers of capitalism. It was All invented right. by somebody like, I don't know if it was the Amish or, it was like a you know this this kind of sect that realized the, the the capitalism monster that was to come, or I should say the corporate monster um, oh, of, from so monopolies, funny. and they invented that game. That. And what did we do in America? We we packaged it and sold it. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's super popular. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny though because okay, from your mi- memory right now in your mind's eye, mm-hmm. the guy on the front of the box, the little old man. Yeah. Right? Does he have a monocle, one of those little one-eye um, glasses, or not? He does now. He didn't at first. He 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 okay. didn't when he first said it, and then when you said it, I remembered it. 
All right, though, that would be a real life Mandela experience with you and me right now, because <laughs> because in my experience, he had it and he doesn't right now. Wow, that's crazy. Now, now we're going to have to check it after this talk. Yeah, <laughs> because I forgot about it. I don't have the game in my house. I haven't played it in over a decade or more until a friend of mine recently asked me this same question. And I said, he has it. He has that glass thing. Yeah. I'm convinced of it. He's always had that. That's and he there. Didn't. And then I looked it up and it's gone. And I'm like, what? And so we were also standing. And I, <laughs> yeah, that it, things and shift. It, so things... that, that would be the mandala effect. It's like you see the mandala, the shape, as everybody yeah. knows, this wonderful meditative flower or what have you, sacred geometry yeah. shape expands and expands so the mandala effect is the idea that in the expansion there is a multitude of paths variety of paths and some people focus from the one angle and some from the other and when you encounter another person who is having a different memory of the same quote-unquote event you're watching you see the mirror dissolving in a sense because what's happening you 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 begin to understand that the mirror um everything is a mirror but this yeah. mirror is multi-faceted it's like a, a dressing room mirror or one of those mirrors that you can look into and From you see yourself different in angles and yes you, you know exactly. you go like that you know yes um it, and that's or, the nature of our reality that yes that, and and so when when these things happen you know sometimes you could swear and then you you can read about this you know people have and one of the most public exchanges i've ever seen that exemplify this was a, a a conversation that patrick stewart the incredible english stage actor who's been in movies i mean he's he played john luke picard he is picard right now in the new star trek series all right um, um the bald-headed guy he plays professor x in the x-men movies incredible actor patrick stewart i might i'm i think pretty sure i'm getting his name right unless I, somebody hit me with a mandala effect and I'm, <laughs> but he was having a conversation with his wife and they were arguing over whether or not he was circumcised and he's like i think i i think i'd know <laughs> you know he and, and, and he literally they they had this argument uh and it, and, it, and they they brought it up to him in a in a talk show because they were like tell us what was going on with this. And he was like, well, my wife was, you know, and she, we were going back and forth and, and all this, he was like, and I was, I was telling her that I, I, of course I would know if I was, because it's mine. And, and he's like, but then when I looked down, <laughs> he wasn't circumcised and he was in shock. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I've never heard this story like this like before. you gotta you gotta google it or duck duck go it it's uh it's cr like cr like the funniest conversation but this ever is in a talk show this confrontation the, the, and that's, he actually that's when it came out and then they were like wow. they were asked and i was like there there it is there's a talk about a perfect example of wow of timelines coming to a screeching collision <laughs> <laughs> in public in a public how personal forum. can it get my god right? that is so private <laughs> you know and, and, and we and always so, hear about wow. how the worlds are sometimes they just kind of come into sync but there are some things that are that are not the same for people being that yeah. we are creators and uh, yeah things like like street names sometimes you hear people say like i could have sworn that name oh, yeah. that tree was or i could have sworn that tree was cut down yeah and it's back. It's back up. Little things like that. Little well, that's things. pretty big. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, tree. That's <laughs> but then if you ask anybody else, they're like, no, no, no. It was always there. It was never gone. And I could I could have sworn there's one in my street that was gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's right there. And I'm like, how is that possible? I remember looking at the trunk and mm. uh, a particular mushroom growing from the side of the trunk when I just oh, wow. got, when I just moved into the street. And I'm like, oh. Uh, that's a beautiful mushroom, you know, the big ones, the fairy banks, yeah. we call them. Uh, so I was looking at that. And then I, I I admired the size of the tree that would have been there. And I thought, okay, well, it's a shame, you know, they cut it out. Yeah. And it's back. It's wow. there. there. There's a tree on that corner. And I just can't get over it. And I'm all alone in this <laughs> yeah. right now. But I've had experiences like that before. And I guess, so 
why this is happening right now and this is happening more often we are beginning if you allow yourself i do think that's probably at the fundament of this Mm -hmm. if you allow yourself to keep an open mind and not discard every single hunch that you get uh and investigate it you know with i mean a healthy critical mind right then um I guess what we're seeing is the the breaking. I mean, maybe that's how you call it: the breaking, the splitting of the prism. Right. So there is a prism. We're at a turning point, and that kind of loops it back very nicely to our beginning conversation. Yes. Where we are at a turning point in history, and it is quite remarkable. And I guess as mankind is, we are better said. We are giving ourselves ongoing invitations to wake up and to remember mm. our magnificence that's really what it is (laughs) um and that's that these invitations are getting more yeah and permission slips are being granted more more readily and more common yes and And there's more um presenters of this information such as yourself so it's starting to bloom and to really sprout. It's popping from the ground everywhere right now. So people who want Thank to God, yeah. dive in there, they really can. You really can. It's quite effortless right now if you're open to it. Yeah. Um, There's a lot to dive is, into. Yeah. And I think we need to see this. We need to hear each other's stories. We need to open up and become more transparent. Also about the question marks we have, the doubts we have, the fears we have. It all quote unquote needs to be addressed come to the surface and that's why i see this time depending on what you're looking at the more yeah. dark or the more light side as a type of collective dark night of the soul it's also what arjun calls Certainly. it you're moving through it together but there's so much beauty and love in that and and this breaking or splitting prism mm-hmm. uh, helps us remember not to cling to outside um, representations of what would be the truth, right. but to always turn back inward and to just, you know, trust that. Yes. Um, whatever the, the guy on the that's Monopoly gonna books. Be your, book, that's um, going to be your only compass. Like or, yeah. 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 Because that's the compass. We um, need to uh, know how to read if we are truly um, wanting to uh, ray, rays, rise yeah. <laughs> in, into the next dimensional reality, which is right. a gradual process and not tomorrow you may wake up in that. It's it's gradual, it's already happening. And in a sense, I believe we're already there. We're just, we're playing yeah. mind games and tricks with each other. But this reality, I'm not negating it. It's real. It's of real. Course. These are real experiences. People are having challenges that's real. Uh, I would never deny that. But on the, on the same or at the same time, since everything is energy and it's not cut, uh, how do you yeah. say clear cut like that? And that's not cut and dry. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a um, transitional phase and everything is already accessible. So if you look at a rainbow, for instance, and you look at the coloration, there's seven colors in a rainbow roughly, yeah. but there's a gazillion colors in a rainbow. If you look at every single segment of all those colors. Yeah. You couldn't it, count them all. Yeah. No impossible and we're just in a in a a certain bandwidth of a transition as large as the rainbow moving from orange to red perhaps and so much is is accessible to us right now even just in that transition it's mind-blowing uh but these these mandala effects um keep us on our toes that's right (laughs) look 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 it's all it's all really happening right here right now and eventually it's all you and if you if you want to try to induce an experience, a, man, a mandala effect experience, then what you could try is you could you could you could take time out of your day to you know to to change your state of being or or get consistent with with a with a meditative practice that that you know it, it is focused on. Um, I don't want to say just manifesting manifestation, but, but focused on bringing abundance into your life and, and then start to notice some of the things that are different in your waking hours, you know, mm-hmm. as you go about your life and just some of the things that are, that are off or not in a bad way, but in a different way, synchronicities 
are the darndest thing. They will mm-hmm. surprise you. You must keep an open eye open mind about how they're going to show up. If you don't, they'll never have a chance to surprise you. But I promise you, it'll be nothing like you've ever expected, encountered, or could have even imagined. Uh, Mm -hmm. And and that's when you see some and experience some of the kind of, I don't know how to, I think quantum is the best word for the crazy things that begin to happen when you walk this path. That, that's, I think, all part of this effect that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if you go to um, Wittika's website, what's the, I think it's awareness, designforawareness.com. She's yes, got some four is a number four. That's right. Design for, just yeah. look at the link in the, in the video description. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Okay. Um, but she's got amazing, um, she's got a visualization technique for positive transformation on there that I was reading that really awesome. It's great. A. So you could check that out too. That's if this is something that you're interested in, uh, in doing and having a practice, there's one available for you. Um, that's really good. I, I was reading it last night and I was like, this is awesome. I'm going to definitely mention it. This is so funny for me because probably it's in the old blogs and I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you have to go check it out. Yeah, you might have to search for it. I don't know. I was pretty, I was pretty, pretty neat Visu- in, in her visualization web. technique for manifesting. I uh, that's in my. Oh blogs. no, no. Well, it's for it's for trans positive transformation. Positive transformation. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> this yeah. is hilarious, right? It yeah, and it was, it's our June, so you may not even ha- remember. Oh, this is actually this really happens. This really happens. Yeah, and people have a private session with our June through me. And I see them like a half year later and it was impressive yeah. one way or another. And they immediately pick up where, where that <laughs> left off yes. and start speaking to me. Remember this thing with, you know, the bear and whatever, you know, yeah. symbology has been. And I'm, I'm clueless entirely. Yeah. You have to fill me in because that doesn't stick in my hard disk. Yeah. So if it was a channeled transmission, yeah, I really honestly have to reread it myself. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to. <laughs> yeah. That, that that happens uh <laughs> you know i mean there are some channels i know who who everybody everybody i think has their own some people are really heavy trans channels and they're you could talk to them afterwards and the only way they're going to remember what they said is if they end up listening to it you know they're just they're not even no, it's not, not home, like that for me. You know? it, this is because you're mentioning something that is several years old. Yeah, that's right, different. Right. So, and then the example I gave is like a session of six months ago, but right. the same would be true for for a session two days ago. But then again, there's a difference between a private session and something that was channeled, you know, uh, yeah. in a group, or something that I personally asked Arjun. Yeah. Uh, so we have different levels of conversations. Sure. As I as I channel, we we never really got into the the switch I made into focal eventually, but maybe another time. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So many subjects, and it doesn't matter. It's perfectly fine. Everything's perfect. But um, uh, so if I have a personal question, I would usually ask before I sleep, and that's wonderful. You earlier in this conversation, you said you invited demented beings, and you did it like. That sounded like a prayer to yeah. me. The way you said it was brilliant. That's just how you quote unquote want to do it. You said mm-hmm. to them, uh, if, if I recall correctly, um, uh, I would love to have a conversation or you can look me up. I'm in this state. I'm going to yeah, be I'm in gonna... this state. <laughs> and then you dropped it. Yeah. And this is the the best way I know of uh, to invite, you know, yeah. um, other And I wasn't even yourself. inviting the the the, mant- the, the mantid beings. I was... I was I was just addressing just the whole field for, for the benevolent, <laughs> yeah. you know, I know, I know what I was aiming for, um, you know, and I just focused on, I was trying to connect with so many different right. um, uh, beings that I was fascinated with at the time and but benevolence and, and compassion and mm-hmm. um, you know, um, s- beings that I know that I w- would be good for me and that I could be good for them, you know, beings mm-hmm. that I could, could sync with the, and then I just left it go. And then that's, that's a key kind of element is to yes. detach from expectations. Exactly. You know, yeah. detach, true. detach, detach. So true. So that's the best way in fact, to invite 
And it's even more brilliant that you kept it open and didn't just address the mentees, yeah. for instance. So that's how I do it. If I have a personal matter in my life that I would like to have a reflection on, before I go to bed, I will do a similar thing and just say, you know, okay, you guys, I'm quite, quite casual with these, <laughs> yeah. with the whole bunch, you guys. And first, my higher self, I address my higher self, my soul. Mm -hmm. And you guys and God, you know, whatever angels, uh, whoever would be the most harmonious match mm -hmm. to enlighten me on this specific topic. I kindly invite you or uh, I would be honored if you can, you know, give me a reflection, if that would be, you know, relevant for me. That's perfect. Uh, and if not, you know, so be it. It's good. I love you. Good night. Right. <laughs> like that. So, and then I go to sleep and it may not happen that night or the next one or the next one, but eventually at some point, and sometimes it is the same night, mm -hmm. um, I, I will receive a dream and by the energy of the dream, I will be able to connect the dots to the question that I asked. Uh, yeah. And this is the most profound way for them to answer me on a private uh, matter yeah. and in a direct one-on-one. -on -one. So that's easier for me than sitting awake, uh, going into a channeling state yeah. and then asking it while I'm on my own. That's actually, to me personally, not my route of least resistance. I right. guess the dreams, because the dreams have always been there are such a yeah. ingrained language now. It's tricky I love... to channel by yourself. I mean, it is. It's, people well, don't realize it. I don't want to say that. I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it or put it out I mean, you got to try. If, but it's Maybe not, for somebody it's, else, maybe yeah. for somebody else, this does work. But for me, that's not my route of least resistance. Yeah. But it's easier in my experience. Oh, I really have to keep this to myself because it's, you know, it's personal. It's truly individual. I can't speak for anybody it's else. True. It appears easier for me to channel for somebody else when I'm doing um, making the connection with the Yael. Mm. That's easier because the other person, and we spoke about this the last time, and oh, yeah. you've, you've experienced it yourself, right? The other person becomes this anchor that kind of pulls right. the information through you rather than you having to pull it in and pass it forward. It's more like a circle and it just flows. It's effortless. It's like, I mean, you know, there's two, when you have, if, if you try to plug something in and it only has one of the things, it's not going to work. But, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, and so you kind of meet the same resistance. At least I did when I was trying to, to, to channel by myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, you feel like, uh, like, you know, like a, a fish with only half of its fin, you're just trying to swim, <laughs> but you feel like you're swimming in circles. All right. Um, but but the, but then when you have someone in front of you or people in front of you, all of a sudden there's this connection and you're plugged mm -hmm. in, you know, mm -hmm. and, and and then it's a different experience, I think. Um, definitely a different experience. That's you know, another I, great metaphor. Yeah. Uh, and, and plug. And sure. And it's true. And, and like if you if you read uh, Jane, Jane Roberts and her experience, you know, Seth often would tell Jane that he couldn't have he couldn't have made the connection through her if he wasn't there. It, right. Yeah. You know, her husband. You mean right? Her husband. Her husband. Yeah. yeah. And and that 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 was his anchor. He needed mm -hmm. her husband there. He would have never been able to come in as full as he did. He said he he tells her that often. Um, it's funny because he calls her he he calls her by. I know. His yeah. Favorite. <laughs> one of his one of his favorite names that she had in one of her lives, which was a man, and it's yes. it's, it's you learn Super a lot confusing. about yeah, it is <laughs> it is, but it's not. But you learn a lot about incarnation and how mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. relationships that you have in this life, whether mm -hmm. it be your your spouse or your father, or your brother, and how you know it, they may not have always been that person in your life they may have had a different relationship to you in another life yeah. um it's, it's just fascinating stuff because i always joke around with my, with my kids and when i'm i when i'm teaching them about some of this stuff i'm like you know you're probably my brother in another life or maybe even my father and they're like i don't know about that <laughs> they just look at me and laugh you know they think it's funny that it's true though it could be totally totally it's totally true yeah it um, wouldn't be them as an individual but there would be a soul right. split off 
where totally. but but still you could tune in with that and have that you could tune in with that parallel simultaneous experience which is also on a higher level you both yeah. of you having a different dance together so to speak so it's what I, what endlessly I, fascinating yeah and and the fact that i'm an identical twin um and the fact that that is one egg that splits mm -hmm. um two souls you know yeah. that come in and decide they're going to share the same dna and have a go at it and i'm just wondering what that deal looks like before <laughs> I mean, some twins are super inseparably close and, 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 and other twins, you know, they can go their separate paths and me and my brother are somewhere in between mm -hmm. and we've grown, we've grown closer now as we, as we mature and get older and he's coming into a much more harmonious um, lifestyle and, and kind of, you know, the events of his life. And, um, but, but I'm, you know, we, it's just funny right? when you, so close to someone from the time you're a, an egg or you know from the time you're conceived being so close to someone you know that's um, unbelievable that's beautiful what an amazing journey yeah. to choose as a soul yeah <laughs> quite and special. then to have that you... mirror you know to have that mirror and and, and have that per you know it, it's, it's just so intense and i see it now what it is uh much much clearer than i did growing up but and he's starting to see it now and and you know like he he i mean he broke me i could have broke i i was in tears i was so happy but he was like he he's finally committed to daily meditation and and um. he just can't do it fast enough or long enough and he's just like i want to i want to keep getting better at this he was like Wow. How do how do I gain more experience? Wow, um, that's beautiful. I mean, besides just meditating, and I was like, I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> wow, that is so but beautiful. I that like is saved a, the text. Yeah, I was such so a deepening of your relationship. This huge. There's, I've been dreaming there's, about that. Yeah, there's no words for this. I mean, to meet your own family mm -hmm. on this level. Wow, what a homecoming. Yeah. Wow. What's crazy. So we're going to, he wants me to go with him and I'm going to, I'm going to go with him. Uh, he, he, he's going to go on Dr. Greer's um, stargazing trip and uh -huh. he's going to, he's going to do the week long meditation retreat uh -huh. with them. Um, and I'm going to go with him for the first three days uh, because he was like, oh, we come with, I was like, yeah, of, of course I'm going to, I'll go, I'll go with you, man. I will, you know, I want to go. And he's like, you know, he, he learned to, to meditate, um, the way that Dr. Greer teaches people, which is CE5? very CE5. Well, CE5 comes from, but it's a, it's a, it's a TM. It's a trans transcendental meditation right. that, that he was taught and that he used to teach. And then the CE5 meditations, that's oh, nice. what Frank, and that's where we're, we're going to go. I'm going to go do with him. And he's kind of a, and I'm thrilled about this because I have a great respect and love for Dr. Greer. Um, you know, my brother's a little uh, crazy about him right now. And I'm like, God bless. That's <laughs> phenomenal news. That is so wonderful, you know. So I'm thrilled about that. But yeah, Greer has done amazing work. Yeah. I mean, just all the interviews he's done, all the research, again, with a lot of military personnel as well, um, who've mm -hmm. had sightings and experiences of all kinds. I find it fascinating. I'm always exploring all the angles and storylines, which I guess in the in the spiritual scene you don't often see that in women I kind of yeah <laughs> i'm quite a nerd dad here so no that's <laughs> awesome both both that side and also if there's news on the um, from science and yeah. it, it begins to overlap into quantum physics and and spirituality uh I'm always, oh man, I'm just at the edge of my seat, so excited for these kind of things. I, I man. So about that from you, yeah. That entire um mega aversion and um wanting to just I don't want to have anything to do with this from my childhood when it comes to uh ET um and, and sci-fi movies and stuff right now, that too has turned 180 degrees. When I started to realize how I can communicate with these beings and it doesn't yeah. have to be a nightmare and it's you know you can actually and that was just my ego terrorizing me and it wasn't yeah. even it wasn't the experiences itself 
It was how I was judging them. So that was the big transformational shift for me. And now it's an entirely different story, obviously. I feel I feel so loved and connected and yeah. uh, more human. That sounds crazy, perhaps, but I feel more human. Now I have found a way to honor this multidimensional part of me. I mean, it's about being human first. That's what we came to be. Absolutely. So that's really important for me. Um, but it made me feel more whole as a person. And to see our human earth story mm -hmm. develop into that direction and to now see movies that you know speculate or joke or yeah you know um of all these future scenarios that we might have um and other experiences of people who are from the army and their point of view which is right. much more abstract often and based on the rational uh and the 3d and this is what we sure. call it in camera you know all of it is fascinating to me. I literally embrace it all. I'm so, I'm just so excited yeah. for our journey. And I understand that all of it plays a part in it and all of it needs to be heard. These are all the puzzle pieces that fascinate me so much. Yeah. And everybody listening in has another piece that I don't even know about yet. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of the same tapestry and we mm -hmm. you know we we love to think that we're ha we're creating thoughts or that you know you know I mean, yeah. we we've based a society around invention you know whereas you know there are a multitude an infinite amount of planets that don't that don't do this they don't they don't invent something and then say this is mine and if you want it you have to pay for it they invent right. you know what i mean like it goes out for the good copyrights of, you know it's not <laughs> packaged and sold to the highest bidder but it's put out for the for the betterment and the progression of the race of the of the species mm -hmm. so we 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 live in this kind of crazy mindset sometimes and we forget that there's other ways to do things that most people haven't imagined you know mm -hmm. and we're just beginning to experiment and play with these ideas so it's a very exciting time to be alive Absolutely. but, but yeah. i want to i want to ask you my favorite question um what what would you what would you give to um let, let's say the human beings all went to sleep at the same time one night for some reason <laughs> and they were in a highly suggestible state and you could you could plant a seed that would take route and hopefully make for a better earth when they all woke up. What's what seed would you plant? What would you tell them? Today, if that would be um, asked to me as it is right now, I would keep it very short and simple and very sweet. And I would just say this moment is perfect for whatever, for whatever you feel you wish to endeavor upon whatever you want to change in your life, whatever you want to, if you want to start a new, you want a blank slate, this is a perfect moment. This right now, you don't have to do anything for it. Nothing needs to look differently for you to start that now. Because this is what I see a lot in the world. A lot of people, me too, on a regular basis, uh, the rational mind can really take that position where, um, it says you have to do this first and then you can do that. That's right. Or get this cleaned up or you're not good enough or maybe later. You're not ready. Yeah. You're not ready. Basically, that's what it comes down to. And and so what I would like to whisper into humanity's ears if they're sleeping is right now is perfect. <laughs> this is it. When you wake up, you will yeah, be ready. You can, you can just, you can start right away. And I love if that. it's, yeah, and if your rational mind still thinks you need to do this or you need to have that money for it or whatever practical, if you give yourself permission to be it energetically, yeah, what, whatever is relevant for you, then eventually it will come somehow. That's so I, true. I, I believe that. I've been, that. That is an answer I didn't know I've been waiting to hear. Oh. <laughs> it's so fucking true excuse my I went, I went almost the whole podcast without dropping an f -bomb. someone's going to write in the comments but do you have to swear <laughs> sometimes you got to swear um no it's so it's so true i see so many people i'm just like what you don't you're ready now you know what i mean like you 
I know you're in a process, but mm-hmm. we all are. What are you waiting constantly? For, you know, I mean, go for it. See what mm-hmm. happens. Take and sometimes you're going to have to leave your comfort zone. You're going to have to take a chance. Mm-hmm. You could call it gambling, but it's not. It's not gambling because if you're on your path, things are going to align and, and happen for you. I promise. Yes. That's the way the universe works. Yes. Um, but yes. thank you for sharing that answer. It was profound and, and wonderful. But I'm so glad we did this again, aren't you? I am. Yeah, this was so much fun. And thank <laughs> you. Much better. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm so glad. And, I'm, and the, the time worked out really well because, well, there's a lot, another story. But my kids ended up, but they were making a lot of noise and then they had to go get a haircut. So I had a quiet <laughs> place to myself. And um, this was awesome. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This really flew by. Oh my. <laughs> it did. It did. But um, thank you so much for everything you do. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah. That's just, yeah. I'm just so grateful. Just so You're grateful. welcome. Me too. And I'll be in touch with you um, about this and when it's going to premiere. And and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have uh, links to uh, Witike's channel to her website. If you don't, uh, if you're not subscribed, check out her channel, subscribe to 